What's going on guys? This is Trendkill and welcome back to part two of my master build guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at the play styles or classes or things like that that really lend themselves to master difficulty. Now a lot of this stuff may be common sense to the guys who are already playing on master, however these guides are not for you, they're for the people who are not playing on master currently and may want to eventually move to master in the near future. So let's go ahead and jump right in. The four major play styles or major archetypes of classes or characters are going to be melee, ranged, magic or mage type classes and sneaky or assassin type classes. Any other classes that you want to list are just an amalgamation of at least two or more of these other main archetypes. As far as those four main styles of play are concerned, let's take a look at them in order from probably strongest to weakest. And I'm going to have to say that sneak or assassin type characters are probably the strongest. And this is why a lot of you guys had an argument with Khajiits being in the crap tier or whatever. Now I say Sneak is probably the strongest because it completely eliminates the damage differences on Master difficulty. If you remember I talked about on Master the enemies do double damage and you do half damage. Well, if you're sneaking up to them and they don't see you and you slit their throat, you've completely eliminated damage altogether assuming that you obviously kill them in one hit. So the survivability with a sneaky assassin type class is the absolute best in the game. Now one of the biggest downfalls to the assassin class is that your survivability is solely based on your sneak skill. The level of your sneak and the perk points that you put into the sneak tree are going to decide how good you are. So you kind of have to focus on sneak primarily and only put points in other things when you don't have something that you can upgrade in your sneak tree. The other disadvantage to the assassin type classes, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the first one, is that prior to level 50 in sneak, the maximum multiplier that you can get from a sneak attack is times 6. After level 50, once you have the assassin's blade perk, you're increasing your sneaking damage output by 250%. So that perk is absolutely paramount in any assassin build. And lastly, dragons are not the easiest enemy to fight as an assassin because rarely are you going to find one sitting on the ground waiting for you to sneak attack it. You're either going to have to be very patient and lure it down to the ground somehow and then find a way to slip back into sneak, or you're going to have to use a separate means like magic or a bow and arrow or something like that. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about the mages and the range classes because they are still better than the melee classes on Master Difficulty because they've got distance between them and the enemy. Now the only real difference between mages and like an archer type class is that the mages are going to use magic damage versus physical damage. Other than that, they're basically the same type of character. Now with a really good warrior type follower, mages and archers can be just as good as sneaky type characters because if you're not getting hit, other than the fact that you may have to cast a few more spells or shoot a few more arrows, you're negating that damage difference. So to keep them in order of what I think is probably best to worst on Master Difficulty, let's go ahead and talk about the mages second. And the only reason I think the mages are slightly better than the archers is specifically because of one perk, and that is impact. Now, while Sneak may be the most overpowered mechanic in the game, Impact is by far the most overpowered perk in the game. If you read the text on Impact, it says most destruction spells will stagger an opponent when dual cast. What that means is all projectile type destruction spells, meaning your fire bolts, fireballs, and incinerates, and the counterparts in shock and frost as well. So anything that you cast and the spell leaves your hand, so not the continual spells like flames and firewall. Now here's what makes impact so absolutely ridiculous. If we take a look at the archery tree and we look at power shot, power shot is basically the sister perk of impact for arrows and not spells. Power shot reads arrows stagger all but the largest opponents 50% of the time, meaning that, you know, giants, mammoths, dragons, and things like that are not going to be staggered, but anything that's smaller than those things is going to be staggered about every other arrow. Impact staggers everything all the time, even up to Alduin. Alduin can be completely stunlocked by a dual casting mage with impact, and that is what makes that perk so absolutely overpowered. Now, one of the biggest problems I foresee with people putting mages together on Master Difficulty is that a lot of the times I see people with identity crises that don't really know what type of mage they want to be. What I mean by that is that a lot of people say, okay, I'm going to use Destruction for damage, I'm going to use Conjuration to keep people off of me, I'm going to use Alteration for my Stone Flesh and my Ebony Flesh, things like that, I'm going to use Illusion to get myself out of trouble with Fear and Calm spells, I'm going to use Restoration to heal myself. 
Well, the problem with that is, is that there are way too many perks to go around in those five schools of magic to really become a great mage. You need to really focus on one primary offensive school of magic, one secondary defensive school of magic, and one backup school that's going to be kind of passive. Now, while we're on this topic, let's go ahead and look at the five schools of magic and let's classify them into offensive, defensive, and passive. And you're going to notice that some of these schools will either fall into one category or all three. Now, destruction is basically your your one and only strictly offensive school of magic unless you want to count like runes or the cloaks as defensive but they're only defensive in an offensive way meaning that if something comes close to you or steps over your rune they take damage restoration is the exact same way but is a defensive school of magic in the fact that almost every spell in restoration is going to help you in a defensive way except for bane of the undead which is going to help you in an offensive way defensively because you're fearing an undead but it's also catching fire as it's running away Way. Uh, illusion is basically the other strictly defensive school of magic and uh, you got things like fear and calm that you're going to use when you're in trouble and you need to get the hell out of a situation. Uh, but they've got certain spells like Courage, I guess, could be considered as an offensive spell, but I've never really found a good use for Courage. Other than when I'm hunting, I'll cast it on a deer, so instead of it running away from me, it attacks me and I can beat it to death. But other than that, I mean, really, Fear and Calm are the only two spells that I found that were useful for a mage. I mean, obviously for a Nightblade, you've got Muffle and Invisibility and things like that, but that's a very situational thing, and those spells really aren't for mages regardless. Um, alteration could be either defensive or passive, depending on how you're using it. Uh, defensive stuff obviously is going to be your oak flesh, your iron flesh, ebony flesh, those types of spells. But you've got passive stuff like water breathing, telekinesis, transmute, detect life, detect dead. Uh, what's the other one? Uh, clairvoyance? No, clairvoyance is illusion. Candlelight is the one I'm trying to think of. Uh, so depending on how you're using that, that's obviously going to be one or the other. And then you've got conjuration, which could really be classified as any of the three, passive, offensive, or defensive. Offensive because you could technically summon something or raise a zombie to do your fighting for you while you sit back and do whatever you want to do, heal it or whatever. Uh, you could also use your bound weapons, your bound sword or your bound bow or your bound battle axe. Uh, defensively, you could obviously use the Conjured Atronox or the Zombies to defend you while you cast spells at the enemies. And passive stuff like Soul Trap or Banishing Daedra, or you could technically even count this entire school as passive. Because 9 times out of 10, you're going to summon your Atronox outside of combat and then go into battle and use them as a passive follower. So you could really construe that as any one of the three. So use this information with a combination of your own research to kind of make an educated decision on which schools of magic you're going to go with. Stick to three and try to stay within those parameters. I'm not saying you can't cast outside of those three schools of magic, but what I'm saying is don't put perks into those other schools of magic. Leave two of them alone and focus on two mainly and then that backup one just as some flavor. Now I don't want to make this just a video about mages because I feel like I'm gone on and on about the different types of magic but I want to make sure I touch on one or two more important things. One is that mages are very very weak so if you're going to be wearing robes or cloth type armor or not really armor just cloth you want to make sure that you have alteration as your passive school of magic. You need that mage armor type stuff otherwise you're going to get one shotted by two handers. You also may want to focus on light or heavy armor or smithing and enchanting and alchemy just so you can get yourself a decent set of gear. Unlike Oblivion and Morrowind, you do not get casting penalties from wearing armor. So unless you're into role playing, you may go that route instead of alteration. That's completely up to you. All right, let's stop talking about mages and start talking about the other ranged type of classes, the archers or the ranged physical damage type classes. This is going to go pretty quick because they are basically played exactly like mages. They're ranged type classes, except instead of spells, they're going to be using bows and arrows. Now, there's a double-edged sword when you're talking about archers versus mages. One, mages have mana they have to worry about, archers don't. However, archers have ammo they have to worry about, and mages don't. Also, archers are probably going to be wearing light or heavy armor, whereas mages are going to be more than likely wearing cloth. So there's a little bit more survivability with an archer. Now another benefit to being an archer over a mage is that the build is much more simplistic. You're basically going to treat it like an assassin treats sneak, an archer's going to treat archery. So you're going to focus on putting perks into archery unless you can't, then you're going to focus on some secondary skills like maybe one-handed or light armor or something like that. 
And lastly, if you want to mix a little bit of conjuration into your archery, you can get mystic binding in the conjuration tree and use a bound bow for your primary weapon. If you do that, you no longer have to worry about ammo, you no longer have to worry about finding upgrades for your weapon, and you get a better than Daedric quality bow with an unlimited amount of Daedric quality arrows. The only problem is, is that you obviously cannot upgrade a magic bow. So if you're planning on going into the smithing tree, a Daedric bow will probably be better in the future. However, again, you're going to have to worry about Daedric arrows. But again, if you use a bound bow, you fall back into the problem as a mage of having to have magicka to do damage. Now, there are two big faults with an archer class. First is going to be finding ammo, and not necessarily just finding ammo, but finding good ammo. If you find Daedric quality arrows or something like that, you're probably not going to last too long. You're going to blow through them. So you kind of feel like you want to just use some old iron arrows just to save your Daedric arrows for when you need them, and that's obviously going to make you do less damage. That's where the conjuration may help. The other problem is running out of arrows. If you're ever in the middle of like a Dweamer Ruin and you run out of arrows, you're pretty much screwed because there's no arrows in the Dweamer Ruins, and then you've got to use your backup like one or two-handed or sword and shield type methods, and you're probably not going to have enough perks in those skills to do really much of anything. So you're kind of one-sided. Now that really sums up the bulk of archery. Obviously in the perk tree, you're going to want to make sure that you get Power Shot, Quick Shot, Bullseye, and Ranger. Those are the the four things that are going to help keep separation between you and your enemies. And other than that, you're just going to play it like a normal range class. The point of a range class is to keep the enemy away from you so that you can avoid the damage deficit of master difficulty. But what if you don't want to avoid that damage difference? What if you want the challenge? Then you should probably play a melee class. I prefer not to play melee on master strictly because I think it's boring and very, very tedious. I don't want to have to pause the game every two seconds and heal myself. I don't want to have to worry about stabbing a guy a couple times and then running away to heal. And I don't want to have to worry about using game mechanics to kind of keep the guys away from me, like jumping up on a rock or something so that they can't get up to you. But if that's your thing, I highly recommend a one-handed and a shield. The shield is not only going to absorb a lot of the damage for you, but it's also going to allow you to shield bash, which helps you control some of the mobs that are around you. Giving that little one-second stun may be exactly what you need to hit them and then run away so that you can heal yourself or pause the game and take a potion and then come back in with your bearing straight knowing that they're not going to be swinging at you as soon as you unpause it. They're going to be kind of stunned so you can take a second to kind of know exactly what's happening. Now you can give a two-hander a try. I just really feel like on Master Difficulty, you don't have enough defense with a two-handed weapon to really make it a viable option. I'm not saying you can't do it, because you can, I have, it's just not nearly as easy. You're also going to want to make sure you focus on either one, Restoration or Alchemy, to give yourself some healing power. I prefer Alchemy because, as I said before, you can always pause the game to give yourself that time to kind of think about, okay, what am I going to do? And you can take a potion while you're in your menu to give yourself that insta-heal. Plus, with Restoration, if you're using a sword and a shield, you have to take your shield off to heal or your sword off to heal. If you're using a two-hander, you're completely void of being able to defend yourself. Now, other than the massive amounts of incoming damage, the second biggest problem for melee classes on Master Difficulty is Stamina. Because you're doing half damage, that means you need to attack twice as much, meaning that you drain your Stamina twice as fast. The problem with that is, is that if you can't do power attacks, you're not going to be able to down the enemy fast enough, meaning you're going to be taking more incoming damage, and you're not going to be able to live through a lot of your melee fights. The benefit to Restoration over Alchemy is that there is a perk in Restoration called Respite that will allow your healing spells to also recover stamina. The purpose of that would be to replace your shield with a healing spell, run in, stab, 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 run out, heal yourself, get health and stamina back, and then repeat. That's not necessarily the worst tactic in the world. However, if you do not want to lose your shield, another method of continually gaining stamina is to make yourself some vegetable soup. What you gotta do is find a cooking pot, it can be found in most inns or normal houses, and you're gonna need to collect a few ingredients. You're gonna need cabbage, potato, leeks, and tomatoes, one of each, and when you mix those all together in a cooking pot, you get vegetable soup. That soup will restore one health and one stamina per second for 720 seconds. 
The cool thing about that is that even if your normal power attacks drain 60 stamina, the game will allow you to power attack as long as you just have one stamina. Yes, it will drain it completely, but as long as you've got one, it will allow you to power attack. Well, the cool thing about the vegetable soup is that gives you an infinite loop of power attacks for a full 12 minutes. That's a really neat way to get around that stamina problem on Master Difficulty. Now, just like Assassins, non-sneaking melee classes are going to find dragons to be an absolute pain in the ass. The amount of magic damage that they can do coupled with the amount of melee damage that they can do or bite damage that they can do close up is absolutely ridiculous. When you mix that all together with the fact that even the basic level 10 dragon has 900 something health, that's an absolute humongous disadvantage to overcome in melee ranged. My recommendation would be to have a follower and a bow on you at all times specifically for dragon fights. And mother of god, we are what, 15 minutes into this video, so I'm gonna have to end this, cut this short. I think I've pretty well covered the four basic types of classes that you can play and their advantages and disadvantages. Obviously, to summarize, I think sneak classes are probably the best, followed by mages, which are followed very closely by ranged or archer type classes. And then finally, melee type classes being the weakest, or not necessarily weakest, but most challenging. On a side note, if you guys haven't looked at my channel in a while, take a look over there. You'll see that I've got a new background. It's pretty badass. Now, a buddy of mine named Resperina made this for me, and he does really good artwork. So if you guys are in the need of any kind of digital artwork, make sure you check the description below for the link to his channel. And also, I'm going to put that in an annotation right here. You can also get to his channel by clicking the RP to the left of my name up on the channel banner on the top of my channel. So go check him out. It's well worth your time if you're into the digital art work stuff. So I'm going to get out of here, guys. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or you uh, agree or disagree with anything I said, obviously make sure you leave a comment below and let me know that. If enough questions come up and I need to make a part two, then I will do that. But right now, I just can't think of anything else that would need to go in this video. So if you guys have anything, obviously let me know. And until next time, we will see you later. Thanks, guys. Bye.